Now, I don't know if this video is ever going to amount to anything, but um, my buddy accepted a challenge of if I made him a competition chopper that he would enter one of those blade sport, blade sport uh, tournaments. <laughs> I'm going to go with this handle, I think. Um, it's, I'm going to use uh, some AEBL, stainless, quarter-inch thick. The only reason I'm going with this steel is it's incredibly tough. It gets extremely sharp, very fine grain. Um, edge holding will be its weakness. So I'm going to leave this harder than what you probably normally would on a chopper um, because AEBL, the edge retention, really goes up a lot when you uh, leave it hard. So this is just an experiment. I'm, I'm familiar with this steel, so I'm comfortable with this steel. So, you know, I got a heat treat oven now. I got this bad boy, which, you know, a lot of people can be like, hey, use M4 or something. It's like, yeah, I could use M4 or something, I guess, but I've never even used that yet. Never even used it before. And I talked to Hank about it, and he, he said I better go with something that I'm familiar with. <laughs> Well, my blade's dull or something's up. I don't know. Hitting some hard spots. Going the old fashioned way. Oh, does Hank feel special? Got him a chulada. Got to get the grip right, that's for sure. I'm debating on taking this little edge off right here, give us more room. I don't know. One thing, real quick. Man, <laughs> when you do a big knife like this, um, it really tests your equipment. <laughs> It'll show you your weaknesses. <laughs> Let's try that again. The trick of drilling holes is not to get in a hurry. After we make the cups, then we fill the cups up with oil. Any holes that go all the way through, you gotta bevel them. Um, these are just extra holes here for glue to go through. The edge cannot be over 10 inches, so I'm gonna put a little bit of a, uh, instead of rechanging the shape of everything, I'm gonna put a little bit of a sharpening choil here to adjust. Uh, it's supposed to be two inches by 10 inches cutting edge. Overall length, 15 inches, which we're right at it. No, not rocket science here. Let's get it started with the, with the triangle. Right on the cutting edge. It's right where I want it. It's just a Harbor Freight. Press. Don't like it's gone pretty deep. I'll loosen it a little bit and just get a different bite on it. Okay, here's where we're at. We're gonna have, uh, get the handle pretty much shaped, and you know it feels pretty good now. I got, I got room. It locks in, and that little swell right here really it does want to. It wants to stay in your hands. And I guess that's the goal, right? <laughs> So I'll get all the scratches out and uh, get it ready for heat treat. This will be the first time I've 
ever used my uh, heat treat oven. But I'm excited. I'll try it with old good old ABL. And then I'm gonna heat treat some of these, which are all S CPM S35 VN. Okay. Lights up here, so I guess we don't need that much. Cut some of this shit off. Uh, this is the first time I ever did this, so I'll take it easy. Don't be too hard on me. <laughs> Actually, I've seen people put paper in here before. Guess I'll do that. Cardboard off or something, huh? Well, I don't know. If I'm doing this wrong, please let me know. First time for everything, right? <laughs> like a professional now I'll start giving everybody advice how to do this in a couple more videos <laughs> sorry <laughs> oh maybe I should have just stuck with a propane forge the hell am I doing uh, I feel like a nerd doing this a bunch of nerds all this geeky shit look at that thing right there that's a geek machine, man. So normally what I would be doing right now is running all over the place, you know, trying to get the air right, trying to get this right, trying to, you know, get the oil temperature right, get everything right. Now I don't know what to do. <laughs> you just put it in there and bake a cake. Definitely easier. I'll get a rhythm going where you can you grind the knives at the same time as maybe heat treat others. All right, Hank, we gonna do this or what? Here we go. All right. Put this sucker in here. Woohoohoo! This thing bursted up in flames, man. Look at that. So, hell? Hopefully it goes out. Went all the way down to 1300 degrees and it burst up in flames. Well, that's not uh, a good first experience. Wow. Okay, so it's been sitting in there at 1550 for about 12 minutes. Um, got one minute to go. And then if I did the programming right, it should, um, it should jump up to should ramp up to 1,975. So, let me find out. Okay. Oh, look at that, there it goes. So, I'm gonna find out how long it takes for it to, uh, to climb. And hopefully it doesn't take that long. But this is a thick piece of steel, I mean, soaking for a little extra time, I'm sure it's not gonna hurt it. It's already jumped up, you know. 10 degrees in 10 seconds so hopefully uh it doesn't take too long but we're gonna find out how long it takes this which is ran off a of 110 by the way this is the ko 18 uh it runs off a of 110 good machine but we're gonna find out if how good a ramp it has so we're almost up to 1600 degrees in 32 seconds all right i'll get back with you bad boy to climb there it went, boom. Now it's gonna hold it for 15 minutes. And it took 32 minutes and 52 seconds. Uh, is that that bad? I don't think it's too bad, right? 30 minutes basically to get ramped up to this temperature. Um, let's do this shit, let's do it.
really stale. It's nice and flat. No warps. Cool. Bada boom, bada bing. Okay. Uh, dirty little bastard, you. Get your little butts in there. Good night. Yeah, I know. It's morning time. What the hell? Oh, come on. Okay. time. Six grit to the gator belt right off the buffer maybe 10 minutes aebl polishes like a son of a gun i mean this it's so easy to get a mirror finish with this stuff cool any scratches off the edge <laughs> Where 
put your fingers is where it's sharpening. Okay, in all honesty, this Norton Coarse Crystalline is really making short work um, out of this ABL. It just chews right through it. I, uh, I got the burr on the run now. I got a nice steady burr all the way up. No dipty doos or nothing. That's one thing with a cleaver. When you got a nice straight edge like this, you got to watch out. You get them dumb dipty doos. Make it look like you don't know how to sharpen. But I got that edge on the run right now. Just like that, it already folded back over. So at will, I can move that edge back and forth. So right now, I'm going to just try to get it right in the middle. Okay, on to the next stone progression. I got a uh, DMT fine, and I'm just gonna get a burr. <clears throat> Shouldn't take long. That's 600 grit. The coarse crystalline was 150 grit, and then it went up to 300 grit. Now we're jumping up to 600, <clears throat> and that's about a high we'll go. It's already got a burr. This stuff sharpens so easy, man. It's so tough. And it sharpens so easy. The polish is easy. That if, you know, if it would just hold an edge a little longer, this would be the perfect steel for a knife. Just that edge holding. Got a little bit of a burr here. Eh, it's pretty good. You don't want too big of a burr because then it weakens the edge. <clears throat> Just enough where you can vaguely feel it. Okay. Get that other side. Just pops right up. Got a little bit of WD-40 on uh, the stone, and it just it really helps it from clogging up. Okay. Get that burr in the middle, we're ready for the next stone. We won't be raising any more burrs now. That's it for burr man. Now, we're on to the Spyderco Medium. Hit it with a little, little oil. This just do cutting strokes. I'm just breaking that burr off. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's shaving sharp, of course. Okay, what kind of test without a nail chop? Let's get a little nail chop going on here. How important is it for it to chop nails? Well, it's not that important, but it lets me know, because it's mostly geometry. You know, cutting nails is, it's almost like a circus trick. You know, if you got it too thin, it's, the nail is gonna make the steel fail. It's all about geometry and what angle you were holding when you were sharpening it. If it chipped just now, I would have raised the angle, put a steeper angle on it. I know this thing can chop nails now, so I like the geometry. Definitely sharp. This is what it's all about, ain't it? without a handle. <laughs> well hell yeah <laughs> okay this is some real hard wood this is some oak that uh oak tree we got cut down um 
Yeah. Convert it to inches. We're at about 250. Okay, and the final hardness to 65. We'll scratch it. But the 60, them are, that's not scratches, but not even close. One little tiny one there, but. So this thing's gotta be about 61, 62. Final hardness, probably 61, 62. Okay, I got this book, Knife Steel Nerds, uh, Dr. Laren Thomas, Knife Engineering, you can get it on Amazon. How tough is AEBL? AEBL is 9.5 in toughness and three in edge retention, okay? Now, if we go down this whole list, it's tougher than everything except for Z-Tough, but Z-Tough only has a 2.5 in edge holding, so ABL is better edge holding. We keep going down, keep going down, keep going down. It's tougher than all these steels, man. Here's another one, 5160, it tied 5160 for toughness. And of course it beats it in edge holding. Uh, 80, 8670 beats it in toughness, not by much though but it's twice the edge holding AEBL. It's tougher and it holds a better edge than 52100, so it's not the clone of 52100 like people. Some people say L6, it's tougher than L6. It's tougher than 80 CRV2, man, and it has twice the edge holding. And I, and I, I confirmed that on one of my tests I did. I didn't realize that it really does hold the edge twice as much. But I mean, just look at all the, look at the toughness and edge holding. Look, here, where's A2 at? A2, it's tougher than A2. It holds the same edge as A2. Actually, it holds a little bit better edge than A2. So, I mean, what's up, man? This stuff is super, super, it's tougher than 3V. Look at that. It's tougher than 3V. ABL is tougher than 3V. Jeez. Okay, now I know I got a good heat treat and I got the geometry where I want it. I'm going to use this stuff. It's a uh, half G10 and, um, you know, half rubber. So that's different. <laughs> uh, you know, that should be uh, a, a adequate grip. G-Flex. It's the strongest two-part epoxy in the world, man. I had so many pins on here, I kind of just made sure every pin is in every hole first. I'll just dip it down in there. Paint it on like Mozart. Yeah, look at that contraption. <laughs> G flex. Okay, this is gonna require a beer. Eat a chopper. I'm my love.